Good evening, YouTube friends and family. This is your girl, Laura, coming to you with another video. And tonight's video is going to be a continuation of the series, 10 Things That We Need to Stop Doing. I decided to change the name of the series, and so that will be reflected in the previous YouTube videos as well. And the new name will be 10 Things That Christians Need to Clean Up. And I know, I don't want to step on anyone's toes tonight, but if I have to, I have to. Let me give you my excuse me, I'm sorry, pardon me in advance, but I must keep pressing forward. Now, this study came from the study of John chapter 3, verse 30, in which John stated he must increase, referring to Jesus, but I must decrease. John allowed us to to peek into Satan's tactics, in which Satan tactics has not changed over the thousands of years that he's roamed this earth. He has come up with a surefire plan to hit us where it hurts, to get us to stumble, to get us to fall, to get us to crumble, to get us off focus, to get us distracted, to keep our eyes off the prize. And do you know what his surefire plan is? There's only three of them. There's only three areas in which he attacks us and he knows just where to hit us. And he knows where to hit us, what to hit us with, just to see us fall. My friend, those three areas are the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Let me say that again. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. That is his surefire plan to get you off balance, to get you off focus, to get you distracted, to get you to fall. Now, my friends, we all make mistakes and that's part of being human. But Satan wants to make sure that when we fall, that we feel as though we can't get up again. But oh my goodness, yes, we can. Now, before I jump into the lesson, let me go ahead and give you the 10 things on the list that Christians need to clean up. Um, first on the list is selfishness, becoming offended easily, the need to be right all the time, the blame game, dwelling on the past, all negativity, judging others, playing church, seeking to fulfill worldly desires, and idol worship. Now, this is not an all-inclusive list, but from the study of John chapter 3, verse 30, those are the 10 things that I picked up on that John was giving us a warning, offering us a caveat. Now, tonight we're going to pick up uh, on number five, which is entitled Dwelling on the Past. That's number five on the list. Now, my friend, we all have a past. The past is something that comes with living. If you live long enough on this earth, you are going to have a past. The past may not be so pretty. The past may include things that we totally regret, things that we have said, things that we have done. It may even include thoughts that we may have had towards others, things that we are not so proud of and we wish to leave far behind, you know? And so tonight I came to tell you that you can leave the past behind. You do not have to remain imprisoned to the stronghold of your past. The past is what it is. It's the past. The past is full of mistakes, regrets, things that we've done and said in which we've hurt others. And my friend, things that we can't take back, that we wish that we could. But you know what? As long as we live, we will continue to make mistakes because guess what? We're all imperfect human beings. That's a part of life. 
our imperfections. We are perfectly imperfect. And so with this life comes a lot of opportunities to do right and to do wrong. And when we do wrong, that's called a mistake, but we need to learn from that mistake. Now, a mistake is something that happens once. And I'm not saying that, you know, to take all of your mistakes and, and lump them up under one umbrella. In each different areas, we're going to make mistakes in life. But a mistake happens once. If we continue to repeat the same mistakes, that means that we're not getting the lesson. And that means it has become a habit. God will not allow us to move forward until we learn the previous lesson. And so however many times it takes for us to bang our heads on the brick wall or to fall flat on our face, that is how long it will take for us to get the lesson and to move forward. My grandmother always had a saying that if you were walking down the street and there was a cliff ahead of you in which you could fall, wouldn't you want someone to warn you about that cliff? And the answer is, of course. If there's something ahead, if there's danger ahead, of course I would want someone to warn me. But how many times have warning came to us? How many times have someone offered us a caveat and we didn't listen? I mean, every parent can attest to this story where you try to tell your teenagers, preteens, young adults, hey, don't go this route, this, this, and this can happen. But of course, if they don't want to listen, you have to allow them to go on and make the mistake and fall flat on their faces. But they were warned. And my friend, we are allowed to make mistakes in life so that we can warn others, so that we can be a testimony to others that we've overcome, that we've grown from those mistakes. And to help others to prevent them from making the same mistakes that we've made. Now tonight, when it comes to dwelling on the past, I want us to know that we can let go of those moments. We can have a funeral for our past. We need to do whatever we need to do to get rid of and to free ourselves from the past. If we have to write it all down, then burn it. If we have to write it all down and tear it up and throw it in the river, or if we have to write it down and take it and put it in a bottle and bury it in the backyard, we need to have a burial ceremony for the past. Now, what does a burial ceremony for the past, what does that include? Well, first of all, it includes forgiveness. And that's hard. It's hard to forgive ourselves and it's hard sometimes to forgive others depending on the offense. But the first thing we have to do is forgive. And who do we have to forgive? We have to forgive ourselves, others, our parents, our siblings, our friends, our schoolmates, and our coworkers, and anyone else that you need to add to that list. Well, I'm going to end this video right there and you go and you have yourself a burial ceremony for the past, and you start with forgiveness. Thank you so much, my friends, for listening. Don't forget to catch the next series to this lesson, 10 Things That Christians